In the news this week, Australia and China have embarked on a major food exporting deal. And mosquito disease warnings have been issued as spring approaches in Australia. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Daniel Staniskov. Good evening. The land of milk and honey took on a literal meaning Australia after WA farmers signed a major food export deal with China. Meanwhile, local farmers will have to prepare for the huge increase in demand due to the country's appetite for quality produce. WA farmers and a Chinese company have reached a new deal to export pre-packed WA goods to China. The deal came following Australia's free trade agreement with China to cut import tariffs on produce, including main exports such as milk and honey, by 15%, with hopes of tariffs on other food products being reduced later on. Lifeland said uh, they were wanting to put West Australian food into China, and we said, yeah, it's a good idea. WA Farmers President Dale Park said that he had plans for exporting oats and meat through further discussions. 80% of our grain, 50%, over 50% of our meat gets exported. So any, any market, any new market is a good market. The agreement also included axing of an existing 2% oats tariff. Meanwhile, the current 25% tariff on beef and sheep meat will be phased out within nine years. Helene Fung, WAMN News. The itchy sensation is returning for many Australians due to the return of spring and mosquitoes. The Health Minister is warning of the real danger of the Ross River virus and urges citizens to actively prevent being bitten. Health Minister Kim Hames launched the Fight the Bite campaign in Mandra in an effort to make people more aware of the dangers of mosquito-borne diseases, especially in the Peel region. The Fight the Bite campaign is a community awareness campaign designed to remind people where mosquitoes breed, how they can stop them doing it. Some of the most common mosquito-borne diseases in WA are Ross River virus and Barmer forest virus, which could lead to lethargy, severe joint swelling and pain for several weeks. Dr. Hames said the campaign focused on raising community awareness and reducing the number of mosquito-based diseases. It only takes one mosquito bite to get diseases from mosquitoes and they can be extremely debilitating. Meanwhile, mayors in the southern suburbs advise citizens to take action against mosquito bites by putting on insect repellents. If they're outside at all, make sure that they're wearing light-coloured, loose-fitting clothing, long sleeves, uh, they've got a repellent on and that they're mindful of the environment around them if there are mosquitoes there. Ashna Garwell, WAMN News. A bumper sticker printed by one of Perth City Councils has reignited community discussion about environmental conservation. Nelson Lil tells us why. Ivan, the City of Melville has ramped up its campaign in favour of the Railway's Highway Extension, rolling out bumper stickers to gain support. It aims to increase support for current concerns in the area to businesses, environment and traffic. The stickers are just the start of the campaign, with more action coming in the next few weeks. The City of Melville had rethought the link 12 years ago and said, keep the Eastern Bypass. Make sure that the bypass for Melville is also a bypass for Corbin and a bypass for Fremantle. A bumper sticker solution, that's a beauty. Come on, let's get real. This is a big question. We've got to get real answers to the big questions around import and export logistics. Bumper stickers just doesn't do it for me or for anybody else. The state government has extended its anti-terror legislation. The bill will extend police powers until 2025 and also strengthen their ability to issue warrants to target homegrown terrorist activities. Police Minister Lisa Harvey says the legislation will make sure WA police have the most effective powers to respond to terrorist threats. We can't afford to be complacent. You know, the terrorist organisations that are advocating these acts and reaching out to vulnerable people to engage in these activities have their reach through social media right across the world and we can't rest on our laurels here in Western Australia. Volkswagen is yet to decide who will be the automobile giant's chief executive after Martin Vindikoff stepped down in the wake of a scandal around falsifying diesel emission standards in the United States. It's reported that cheating software was installed on three diesel-powered cars with brands including Volkswagen, Audi and Skoda. The ACCC told WMN News in a statement that they were still making inquiries to determine whether consumers might have been exposed to misleading claims. I am deeply sorry that we have broken this trust. 
I would like to make a formal apology to our customers, to the authorities and to the general public for this misconduct. China President Xi Jinping visited the United States and met President Obama at the White House. A welcoming ceremony was held on location and both leaders discussed various issues including online safety, the global economy and the Southern China Sea dispute. Mr Xi's trip comes just days after Pope Francis visited the US where he met with world leaders. And on News Night this week with Blake Danuzak, veteran TV journalist turned CEO of Life Education New South Wales, Kelly Sloan joins the program to discuss alcohol consumption in Australia. Find the podcast online and be sure to join News Night every Thursday on Yes FM. And those are the stories you need to know this week. We have the latest news on our website. Until we see you again next Sunday, have a great week and good night. Good night.